So step on online. What did we write? Um, test one. Okay. So step one. Test. Nine and minus one. So yeah. So we just got nine to the one minus three, which equals to six, and that's obviously divisible by six. therefore true. Cool. Um, second step, Ethan. Um, so assume true for any equals k. Right. Assume true for n equals to k. And then what did you write next? Um, so n to the k minus... Um, 9 to the... 9 to the k? Yeah, 9. 9 to the k yep. minus 3 would equal 6m. Good, right. And what is m? And where m is an integer. Good. Right. Really important that you specify that. Now the best part, save the best philosophy, Mitch. What is step 3? Uh, prove true for k um, plus 1. Right. Prove true for n equals to k plus 1. Alright. And then remember, it's really good to write down what you're actually trying to prove. Right? Mm. Prove that. Prove that. 9 to the k plus 1 minus 3 equals to um, something which is divisible by 6. And I can write that as 6n where n is an integer. So why do I want to write n and not m again? They're two different statements, right? And um, you don't want to use something that you've already done before, right? This is just some integer, right? It might not be the same integer. Yeah, I want to make a clear distinction between those two statements. And again, I'm always going to start with the left-hand side. So I've got LHS is equal to 9 to the k plus 1 minus 3. Okay, now before I keep going, <clears throat> remember how I said it was sometimes difficult when I have this statement here to try and find 9 to the k minus 3 inside this statement here. So what did I suggest we do? Uh, 9, you say 9 Yeah, right. Before I do that though, remember over here, over here, I have 9 to the k minus 3 equals to 6m. Um, so all I'm going to do. I'm just going to rearrange it, right? So nine to the k equals to six m. I'm not going to make that same mistake. Plus three. Okay. And then, like Amman said, right? The next step, though, this I, I want to try and break up or see if I can rearrange it in some way, so I can substitute something in from step two. So I've got nine to the k multiplied by nine to the one minus three, and then I can see. Oh, I've got a nine to the k here. I've also got a nine to the k over here, so I can use this part that I found in step 2, and I'll replace it with that result. So I've got, instead of 9 to the k, I've got 6m plus 3, multiplied by 9 to the 1, minus 3, and that's from step 2. What do we want to do next? Okay. Like, um, multiply it, so it becomes uh, 56m plus yeah. 27, 56, 54, sorry. Um, <laughs> 54m um, yeah, plus 27. Plus 27 minus 3 yeah. is 54m plus 24, and you can factorize that to have 6 out the front. That's I think you can go on, yeah. 6 out the front, yeah. The 6, 9m plus 4. And it's really important to keep a clear goal of what you have in mind, right? What am I trying to get? I'm trying to get something multiplied by 6. And then when you get to this stage, you can see, ah, oh, clearly, right, I've done this correctly because. All these numbers are divisible by 6, right? And induction is really good in the sense that um, you can see whether your result is actually what you're meant to get. And it's also frustrating in the sense that you can see clearly <laughs> if you've got the result that you're meant to get, because then you have to go back and see where you went wrong if it doesn't work out. Um, and I can just write that as 6n, where 9n plus 4 is an integer. Okay? And then Mitch's favorite part. What do you write before? Uh, therefore, the result is true by mathematical induction. One more line oh, above it. Hence, if n equals to k. If the result is true for n equals k, then it is true for n equals k plus 1. 
Yeah, I might write something different each time, but as long as you get the gist of it. Hence, if n equals to k is true, then it is true. Get the stats for n equals to k plus 1. And therefore, true by mathematical induction. Easy. Good.